Hi, I'm Michael Bean, and this is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for Wednesday, February the 10th. So I'm an acting teacher. I run an acting school in Vancouver, BC. I've been teaching for about 20 years coming up, uh, and I've been running this class since March of 2020. So we're coming up on a year of that. Today, we're going to be talking about a kind of basic idea that I cover in class all the time, use behavior to tell the story that the words aren't telling. You know, and so I very quickly before class went on to the internet and I Googled you know, what are you know, movies that are being most watched. And so I just pulled up a random movie trailer from you know, here's what's being watched most on Netflix in January. I'm just going to show you a little clip from that movie trailer and then talk you through some of the things that we're seeing. You know, and the reason that I chose to use a movie trailer is both because they're very, very accessible, um, but also because they're very fast, right? They're like commercials in a movie trailer, you're just getting these very little clips of somebody. Obviously, if you were doing a more detailed scene, there's so much you can do to show behavior, uh, to add to the scene the things that the words aren't saying. And the further you get into sort of very good writing, typically, the more likely you are to need to bring an extra level of behavior. The character's lines may actually say, I'm fine. Like you may have a character say, I'm fine over and over again. Then you have to read the script or you have to read the breakdown or you have to sort of read between the lines to know, oh, they're not fine. And what kind of not fine are there? What kind of not fine are they? And then how do I tell that story? How do I use my body to tell that story? So the first person I heard give this particular note, you know, and acting teachers, like everybody else, just borrow from everybody they can. Uh, and the first acting teacher I heard give this note in a way that really landed on me was a guy named Larry Moss. I talk about him here quite a bit because I found his classes very influential. And I think that for me, it's one of the clearest ways to think about physical action in a scene is use behavior to tell the story that the words are not telling. Uh, so let's take a look at this little clip from what looks like a very silly movie called We Can Be Heroes. This is the official trailer on YouTube. Yeah, and I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm just going to show you this little micro clip here. Missy Moreno? Yes. You'll need to come with us. Okay. You so there. <laughs> you Missy Moreno, shoop, you're gonna need to come with us. Probably that is the only moment this uh, woman shows up in the whole film. Welcome to Heroic's headquarters. You will be staying in our underground stronghold. As the children of Okay. You know, uh, so now this woman probably has a, like a much more substantial role, you know, but you can see you know, from her physical behavior you know, that both hers and the guy behind her you know, is telling a story, right? That, that is adding information, just like the way that she is holding her body, the way that she's choosing to move. Obviously like wardrobe you know, has a big part of this. She doesn't have, uh, the actress is not gonna have a whole lot of influence over you know, these long fingernails you know, or the jewelry that they put on her character. You know, but she is going to choose the physical behavior and likely this is something that the character, uh, that the actor you know, sort of came up with you know, in process you know, or possibly even brought into the audition and they're like, oh yeah, that's exactly it. You know, and so I, let's look at, uh, there we go. Let's look at this lady. Okay, um, these were like really simple, you know, actor role. You know, uh, the, if, if you can imagine in the audition, you know, and let me see if I can just turn the, the audio off. I can, yeah. Right, so obviously in the audition, you're not gonna get the dramatic music. Uh, you know, it's not, you're gonna, not gonna get a quick cut. You're literally gonna uh, get something that says, you know, what, uh, walk up to girls, you know, you're gonna have the two lines, everything else is gonna be redacted, you know, it's gonna be uh, blacked out or it's gonna be whited out. You're just gonna have these couple of lines because they're not gonna wanna give away the film. This person back here is probably uh, background, it's probably an extra, you know, so um, they're uh, not an actor, you know, uh, likely. I mean, 
they might be an actor, you know, but they're not being paid uh, an actor rate for this piece, probably. They're just here to decorate the scene and look very serious. Um, this lady you know, uh, likely had an audition and possibly even a callback uh, to come in for her one line. You know, and so the, she doesn't have a whole lot of work that she can do in telling the story, but she's doing what she can. Right? Again, wardrobe's not up to her. You know, the way that she holds this, the way she brings it up. Now, I don't know if you remember, but they added a sound effect. You know, I mean, it's, um, it's a kid's film. So it was like, uh, which I think is very funny, um, but uh, but does give you an indication, right? Um, super straightforward, you know. So if you are playing that character, you know, then you're gonna need physical behavior that says, this is very urgent. Right? You're going to need that in your posture. You're going to need that in the way you walk up to the lady. You're going to need that, you know, in the way that you sort of whip out the badge. You know, and is it a silly movie? Absolutely. Are they going to cast somebody who plays it silly? Probably not. You know, the in something like this, you know, uh, I mean, you can see that, you know, or I hope that you saw just sort of the zooming in on this like micro character uh, in a film, you know, which is often these are going to be your first one, two, six, ten roles in films and in TV shows are going to be these, these very small roles. So it's going to, they're going to be one line. They're going to be two lines. Sometimes you'll be paid as an actor, but you have no lines. Uh, the, right, if they've had to audition and you have sort of something specific that you're doing. Yeah, and so we could do this with a much larger scene, but I think that it's useful in that respect. Yeah, so let's look at a short script. Uh, this is, uh, and Christina, um, I would love to uh, get you to help with this as well. You know, uh, Amy's going to help us too. And so we can see a couple of different versions of this. You know, so uh, this is from a project uh, called Trick or Treat. Uh, Ar Artie, uh, do you want to uh, read, do you want to read one of the characters as well? Yes, sorry. Sure. Yes. Okay, so uh, Amy, uh, you're going to read Patty, and Artie's going to read Schrader. Yeah, I'll read Schrader. Schrader? One. Yeah, Schrader. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, so uh, here we go. Yeah. Actual edition sides. Uh, here we go. Just a gawkish and lonely girl who was teased one too many times. She grins at Schrader and reaches into a pocket. Want a candy apple? He holds it up. It's covered in lint and fuzz. Um, no, thanks. Did you carve all these yourself? Yeah, made my costume too. Like it? I do. Schrader smiles knowingly, an idea brewing in his head. Patty avoids eye contact, clearly hiding a slight crush off her sheepish grin, cut to. Now, one of the reasons I picked this is because the physical action is written into the script. So there's behavior written into the stage direction. You don't normally get that, but in this case, you've got it. And so if you've got it written in, then at least start by playing with that. I haven't covered this in the lesson in quite some time, and I just think it bears repeating over and over again. If you have physical action, if you have reactions, if you have those written into the script, start by just trying it exactly the way it's written. You know, and then if, um, depending on how that works, maybe you modify it, maybe you change it, maybe you're like, actually, I don't need that action, I need a, a different action. You know, obviously you're not gonna prep a candy apple for this. You actually don't need to be holding anything in your hand. Um, but we've got to say gawkish and lonely and teased, you know, uh, but that's not in the lines. So you can imagine that if this was the kind of script that didn't have the stuff uh, written out here, if you just had a breakdown that said gawkish, lonely, teased, uh, but then the script just said, want a candy apple. Yeah, I made my costume too, like it. You know, so, um, the, so let me take a look at these lines. Uh, because you know, I'm, I'm going to get you to to do these lines for us. You know, want a candy apple? Um, you know, and yeah, made my costume too. Like it? You know, if, anything that's kind of like that. You know, some of you know, gawkish, lonely, teased. You know, maybe we get in in the delivery, but it says here that she's got a crush. You know, and so we've got layers here. We've got the we've got the crush. So obviously, she's going to be trying to make a good impression. You know, uh, we've got. Uh, Schrader's opinion of the candy apple obviously is that it's gross, etc. Um, but uh, but if you're playing Patty, you know, then we we want behavior that says gawkish, lonely, 
um, so that you don't have to uh, say that with your lines. You know, and so that's the thing that I think would be fun to play with. You know, and uh, Amy, remember the lines are, want a candy apple? You know, and then, yeah, made my costume too. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and then? Like it. Mm -hmm. Like it. Okay. That's it. Yeah, made my costume too. Like it. Uh, and so the, you've seen uh, Christina's um, character lines exercises from the last couple of uh, the last couple of weeks. And so uh, as illustrations of that moment before. So in, in this, your character has the first line, you have want a candy apple. Most of the storytelling that you can do with behavior is gonna happen before that first line. All right, and so uh, let, let's just give you a shot at it. You know, just try something, anything. We'll give Christina a shot at it. Just, just try something, anything. You know, uh, and then I'll throw some ideas at you and we'll give you both a chance to try it again. Oh, hi, Murtaza. I'm so glad you made it today. So here we go. I, I will read the Schrader lines with you. you know, I'll give you a, a standby uh, and you know, take your time. Stand by and action. Want a candy apple? Uh, no, thanks. Did you, uh, you carve all these yourself? Yeah, made my costume too. Like it? I do, I do. And it says Patty avoids eye contact, clearly hiding a slight crush. Obviously you don't you know, wanna stare at the floor too, too much, but so that's what we've got in the breakdown. Good, so there's our foundation. It's just like you saying the lines. And then there's all sorts of behavior we can add to that, just mess around with it. Uh, good, uh, Christina, uh, let's give you a shot to mess around and then I'll just throw some ideas at both of you and you pick the ones you like and you know, uh, we take some bigger risks with it. So, uh, okay, so the lines, one a candy apple and then yeah. I made my costume too, like it. Yeah, that's it. That's all you got to say. Good. All right. Stand by and action. Want a candy apple? Uh, no, thanks. Did you carve all these yourself? Yeah. I, um, I made my costume too, like it. You do. <laughs> uh, great. Yeah, and so then uh, if we start we talk about physical behavior, sort of like how to bring more you know, to a scene like this. Um, the uh, like, what says you know what, what kind of what what uh, does an awkward or gawkish person do? You know, so not like what does that feeling look like, but what might an awkward gawkish person you know who is you know on her front steps on Halloween? What might she be doing? I can see Christina thinking, I've, everybody's racking their brain, you know, throw it in the chat window, you know, or uh, just, you know, unmute yourself, you know, and, and give us some options, right? So we don't have a moment before written in here. Like it doesn't say what she's doing before she says the first line, but you can be creative about that physical behavior, right? Use behavior to tell the words um, that the story, uh, uh, tell story that words aren't. Um, She's struggling to yank the sucker out of her pocket. That's a great option, Candy, where she's like, the candy apple's really sticky and she's like, <laughs> you know, right? so you're giving yourself a huge obstacle to then, tr so then you have to try and, and be cool. Uh, Amy, did you have something you wanted to throw in? Um, I was thinking like maybe she would try to take like deep breaths before she goes up to this person like to calm herself down. Right, right, right. You're gonna give, and in which case you'd wanna be like a step or two back and like, you know, uh, and in which case you could like, you could really be like looking out at the trick or treaters, look over, see him, right? And, and like, you could really take all of that time. You know, if it was Nickelodeon, you could give us you know, the big response and otherwise it would have to be on the inside. Um, you could be, you could be fussing with your outfit. Right, uh, the what we need is like awkward and gawky, and so you could just decide that your like your clothes don't fit very good. Um, right, you could uh, be you could be nervously eating candies. 
<laughs> right? So, you know, so that you started the scene actually with like a, you're finishing a mouthful of, and you had to finish a mouthful of candy before talking. You would never want to do what I see Christina doing and pretending to eat. Never, ever do that in an audition ever. Um, but if you want to try that, Christina, then just like quickly run to the kitchen and grab a cracker. You know, the, we're like, you're at home. You really have real food. Like why pretend to eat? Mime, unless you're an excellent mimer, it's going to basically not, it's not going to work. And even then, like miming food, just don't. Uh, right. So, uh, anybody else? You know, the those are those are three really solid options. And obviously, like if we kept looking for it, you know, right? Like, you know, what? Uh, she could be reading a book. But like, let's say you had a um, you you had a, like a math textbook or something that was like close at hand, you're like, oh yeah, right? Like I actually have my math textbook here. And so I'm going to use behavior that says like super nerd, uh, right? She could uh, start like trying to peer through her Coke bottle glasses and then like quickly pull them off, you know, and uh, and, and like you know, spend the full part of the first part of the scene wiping them on her shirt, right? You, you could use behavior to tell that piece of the story. Yeah, Christine, you've got another idea or for Or she could be like, gum could be like stuck under her foot and she's like trying to like, get it off and then she's like trying to talk at the same time and then like she's like getting stuck her foot like stuck to the ground at the same time as well right like that's sort of very big broad kind of like nickelodeon disney if it was that kind of comedy you know like you probably could you could totally do that if you wanted to do that for this, this style of show then you would have the like the gum or the like somebody just like threw something walked by and was like you suck you know and so you're just like just you're just like wiping the like mess off your shirt and feeling bad about yourself and looking at the mean kids and then you look over and you're like Oh, right. So the, there's all sorts of ways that we could bring that behavior in. Okay, so Amy, let's just give you another crack at it. Okay. Um, so uh, take your time. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna step in, step into it. You know, like let's give you give yourself that physical behavior before you look up and see the guy, so that we really get a private moment of us seeing you doing whatever you're doing. And that's what we are, is going to help shape the story we make about who the character is. Okay. Stand by yeah, and action. Do you like candy apples? Oh. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, did you carve all these yourself? Yeah. I. Do you like my costume? I made it. I do. Great. Uh, Sorry, yeah, I messed up the lines. Oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. You know, like, mm -hmm. you don't have the script in front of you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really just an exercise. Take the volume down, you're, you're, over, you're projecting too much. You're, oh, okay. So you're using extra volume, like more than if I was just asking about breakfast, right? Like if I'm mm -hmm. asking you're just gonna talk. So just talk like I'm six inches away from you. Start a couple of steps back, you know, and, um, would say that uh, like this was a good exploration you know of the uh, the whole like take a couple of deep breaths and I would say that it, it doesn't work like it doesn't tell the story it actually just looks like you're trying too hard mm -hmm. you know? and so this time um, start as far back from the camera as you can get without yanking your headphones out or hurting yourself mm -hmm. okay so Think. physically move back yeah good and, and off to and off to the corner mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then on, uh, you're gonna start with your eyes down. On action, you're gonna look up and see the guy, you know, and just see the guy. Good. You don't have to show me seeing the guy exactly. You just see the guy. And then the, the behavior that we're gonna use is how slowly and tentatively you step forward, how slowly you reach into your pocket and hold out the candy apple to him. Keep the candy apple down below where the camera can see, because then we can believe that you just really actually pull the candy apple out of the pocket of your jeans, which is gross. You know, but that's for us to be grossed out. So then, so what we're really using is like the pacing. So the behavior becomes like how slowly you approach rather than anything you're trying to do with your face. Cause we want to remove the pressure from you to try and tell the story with your face and your voice, right? We're using, okay. stand by. So you're looking at the ground, you're right? Always be, be um, when you hear stand by, go into the world of the scene. Cause otherwise what happens is what we saw with the first take, which is your eyes were on me. I said, stand by, I said action and boom, suddenly you're in the scene. And the mm -hmm. risk is then the camera catches like a half second of you before you're acting. And so on standby, you should be in the world so that on action, you're already there. 
So you're looking at the ground, you know, like it's Halloween. Everybody makes fun of you. Stand by action. Look up, see the guy. Oh boy. Take your time. Take your time. See, keep looking at the guy really slow. Just walk up real slow. And then you don't have to make the faces. The faces are too much. Faces are just, you look like you trying to feel stuff. Just actually see the guy and walk up real slow. The behavior's doing the job. Pull out the candy apple. It gets kind of stuck. You have to use both hands. Hold it out. Do you want a candy apple? Uh, no, I'm good. Did you carve all these yourself? Yeah. Less voice. Uh, use half as much volume. Do you like my costume? I made it myself. Yeah, I do. And then, oh, that, that's really nice. He likes it. Oh, and he's so handsome and it makes you shy. And you're like, oh, and you just look down. Don't make faces. I mean, but just like it and look away. Oh, that's nice. Um, good. Yeah, and, it's, and that's what I mean. So right now, uh, you are doing that thing. And thank you so much for being brave and being our demo model. Uh, you're doing that thing that every actor uh, does at the at the beginning, which is they they think that they have to make the face, right? It's like oh, I, like there's a story that I want to tell, you know, and so and so I've got to use my face to tell it. Yeah, but the example that I use when I'm teaching classes, uh, always at the beginning, you know, is imagine that I meet you for the first time, and I'm like. Hi, Amy. It's really nice to meet you. And I'm working really hard to show you how happy I am to meet you. And you're like, what is with that guy? Like he was making all sorts of weird faces at me. He like was trying way too hard to show me how happy he was. And I don't trust it at all. And so the same is true with an actor. If we see you on purpose making the face is that we just don't trust it. You know, so your impulse is really good, right? Like your idea of like, oh yeah, okay. I know mm -hmm. what this would look like, but you have to be a little more creative about how you get there. Like you have to get there through imagining the story because if you just try to make the face, chances are it will not quite read as honest, especially when it's right up close to. Does that make sense, Amy? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. And then Christina, let's get you to try something totally different. You know, like you can you do your gum thing. You can, oh yeah, math. There you go, totally. Here it is. <laughs> Good, yeah, yeah. And then and really like tip the title up. You know, uh, you know, uh, and, and if we're really adding behavior, uh, you know, uh, on on standby, go oh, like like what you're reading in the math book is really interesting, you know, and uh, and flip the page. So get the math book. Uh, stand by. Uh, oh, and then and then when you see him, quickly close it and either dry, dry, and just like drop it on the floor and put it away. Yeah, again, so the behavior shows us that like I'm not a nerd. Yeah, I am. Okay. All right. So you're using your, your body to tell the story instead of your face. Uh, stand by and action. Oh. Ah. You want a candy apple? Uh, no, thanks. Now, did you, um, uh, did you carve all these yourself? Yeah, I, I even made my costume. <laughs> do, do you like it? I do. Oh, he likes it. Oh, look away. Oh, that makes you shy. Oh, good boy. He's really cute. Uh, cut. Great work. All right. So, the so many ways to tell this story. You know, but I, I hope what I'm landing is the lesson that uh, the, your behavior choice uh, will can help tell the story and often can be more effective than trying to sort of make the face in terms of conveying feeling in a clear way. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, I know that murtaza has got a good question because he emailed me and I was like, come to class and ask a question and then I'll answer for everybody. Um, but uh, but before you know, I take uh, Murtaza's question, uh, is there, uh, do any of you have questions about uh, anything that I've covered here? Is there anything uh, that you'd like me to talk about? Questions, questions. Okay, uh, hit us, Murtaza. What was your question? If you're 
quick typer, you can type it in the chat window, but otherwise just unmute yourself and ask it with your voice. Maybe he's shy. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, Murtaza emailed there. My question about how to make it in the film industry when you're wanting to be an actor and a screenwriter. Uh, <laughs> I wish there was a simple answer to your incredibly complex question. <laughs> Uh, the the short answer uh, for you know how to make it in the film industry you know is that you are going to need to first be a skilled actor then you are going to need to find a talent agent then you're going to need to go out for auditions and then you're going to need a combination you know of um, focused and uh, dedication skill you know and good luck you know uh, the the part that you have total control over is being a skilled actor you know and so that you can do. Now, screenwriting, I must confess, I don't have any direct experience of. You know, I know that a lot of screenwriters do go to full-time screenwriting programs. Uh, and one of uh, Murtaza's questions was about uh, sort of, is it useful to study these things at university? Now, I would never discourage somebody who wanted to study uh, acting at university. You know, I know um, uh, quite a few people who studied acting at university, like got a lot out of it. They also got a degree, which made their parents happy, and you know they uh, and they continued to pursue that professionally. Most university programs are not well, what are called conservative conservatory programs. They are not focused on performance. You know, so there's there at a university that focuses is largely academic, even if there's a performance aspect to it. You know, and so there is a single really high quality conservatory acting program in Vancouver, you know, uh, which is Studio 58 at Langara College. It's highly competitive to get into, which means that the students there are very, very skilled. And so you end up working not just with very skilled teachers, but you end up working with uh, other, with peers who are highly skilled. And Studio 58 is probably the only program in town that um, that people will care if you graduate there. They're like, whoa, oh, you went there because it's really competitive because they work incredibly hard. Like you uh, put in very long days uh, and the peer group is so skilled. You know, so a lot of those folks go on to work professionally, particularly in theater. Um, you know, but that, I think that translates to film and TV. I've had students you know, study with me uh, so both before and after uh, going to studio. And, and I have a friend who's on their faculty and teaches there. Uh, the university programs are just more hit and miss. You're going to get um, you're going to get some folks who are very skilled actors and some folks who just like want to be drama teachers or you know think it's a great idea, you know, or right, like so your peer group is going because they they can't be as selective uh, for a university acting program. Like they're still probably going to hold auditions, but they're going to take a lot of the people who audition, and so because they can't be as selective. Uh, the overall quality of the work that you're going to be surrounded by is going to be lower. And I think that's the that's also true of most of the like full-time film and TV programs. Um, now, uh, I this is just my opinion, but I think that most of those programs way over promise and way under deliver that they are so, like if you did the math, most of those like eight months, become a film, a TV actor. Most of those programs are so phenomenally expensive that you could take two or sometimes three of the best part-time professional classes that are available in Vancouver for several years uh, for the cost of you know eight months of full-time training. And I, I get it. It's tempting to be like, well, I just want to give myself total immersion and then I'll like magically be an actor. But like it, um, th that's not my experience of the graduates of those programs. Uh, right, because because they're less um, they're less competitive, you know, and uh, they're like they're, they're less selective. They have to be, uh, and the the schools are mostly focused, I think, on on making money. Um, you know, whereas really like really dedicated film and TV actors are taking classes all the time. You heard Julia Stone, who uh, or some of you listened to Julia Stone's interview a couple of weeks ago, and she she's been taking classes part-time professional classes since she was 11. Yeah, so that's, uh, there's my answer to that. Now screenwriting, Murtaza, I'm just gonna have to forward you to uh, somebody else. You know, I, I know somebody who went through the screenwriting program at VFS and I know that, um, uh, that screenwriters uh, do often take full-time programs, um, but I don't know sort of what the percentages are of folks who 
sort of write a script on their own versus folks in universities. I, I would just say um, when you're doing your research, don't entirely trust anything that is said by a university or college marketing program. All right, look for uh, reviews from uh, industry people that are not posted in a slick published way you know, on the college or university's website. You know? like anything on the internet, you know, to see if you can verify the source by seeing it a couple of times. So hopefully that is some helpful to you. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's our whole lesson today. Thanks for coming for behavior. And we got a little bit of extra school at the end. Uh, come back on Monday because you'll have Leanne Lapp all to yourself. Those sessions are not recorded. We've sorted out her technical difficulties. Um, there were a couple of weeks there where she was waiting and students were waiting and everybody's like, we're just waiting. Uh, but we got it sorted uh, for uh, for Monday. Uh, so, bye. Thank everybody. you, Michael. Thank My you pleasure. so much. Yeah. Bye. Bye.